Well, greetings. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. This is our third tutorial. We've had an overview and then we started uh, last time in creating our advanced filter. And now we're going to move along into start adding data into our user form. We're going to learn how to take the information that we created and pull it up into the user form. So let's go and have a look at what we did last time. We put together an advanced filter that had a keyboard shortcut of Control Shift and the letter A. And we were able, we noticed, to put things in here to be able to filter it. We could put surname in here, for instance. And then we could put all surnames starting with A. And then if we were to hit Control Shift and A, it filtered our data down to all the information starting with A. I'll just reduce my screen size here a little bit. If we put in B here, and then we hit Control Shift A again, it filters all the data with B. So that's where we're up to. We've got our macro recorded to do that. And what we're going to do, you notice that if we change this to, what, to one of these headings, and then put the filter in underneath here, we're able to make this very, very variable. And that's what we're going to do with the user form. We're going to actually change these by code from a drop-down list and then run the filter. So you'll have full control over what you're filtering. So, but the first challenge we've got to overcome is this range of data here is going to be continually growing and shrinking. So if we have a look at our code that we've recorded, you'll notice it's a set range. It says B8 to H207. Now we want that range to be dynamic, to move up and down. Now you might be thinking, oh, we could use a dynamic named range. And we can, it will work fine. But I'm not really, I'm not really comfortable with that because with really large data sets, a dynamic named range is not the thing to use. So there's three ways that I know to do this. One would be in a, a, a dynamic named range. One would be to come into the sheet every time you run the procedure and create a static name by coming down, finding the last piece of data, moving over to the right and naming it. But the third way is a very simple way. I'll show you what it is. To be able to get this piece of data here, we can use what's called current region. So let's click on surname here and just have a look. We'll go to the home tab We'll go over to Find and Select, go to Special, and then we're going to choose Current Region. Now watch what happens. Bingo! It's going to pick up the current region for us. And this is a very, very effective way to use something in our code that is dynamic and will pick up that moving data for us. So how do we do that in code? Well, let's get our piece of code, Alt F11. We'll come back here. What we're going to do is we're going to set a variable up for our sheet name because we're going to be running this from another sheet. So we're just going to call our variable, we'll call it uh, set data and sh capital equals our phone list, which is where we want it to be. So here's our variable. So in here, we to start it, we would just put, so we've got data, range, we want to just have it starting at B8. So we want to pick up the current region from B8 and after there all we should need to just put in a dot and then put in current region. And now let's run our macro, see if it still works. So we've got B in there, let's put C. Click outside, shift control and we'll choose A again and now it's picked up C. So our macro is working fine and what it will mean now is that when we add or reduce information in here, it's going to work just fine for us. So that's the bit of code that we're going to take and put in the user form. So now let's go to the user form and do some work there. Hit Alt and F11 to open up the Visual Basic Editor. Go over to the user form phone list and double click it to open it. And I'll enlarge this. Okay, now move along here. This is the button, the command button that we're going to use in order to pull this data up into our user form list box. So double click that to get into our code. And we want to do it on the click event, so it's private sub command contact dot click. So let's go in here and grab that information from this module. We just want this piece of information here. Copy it over, come over back into our user form, double click on there again, and paste it in. So into that command button click, we now have 
our advanced filter is going to run. So we, we can run it from or by clicking this button. Let's go back over and see if that works. So we'll click out of the Visual Basic Editor by clicking on the sheet. We'll go back to our interface and we'll open up the user form. Now what I want you to do is click the database button so that the user form is sitting over the top of our data set. Now change this in here to something that you might want. Let's change M as the filter criteria under surname and let's click get contact. Now you notice it, it works, it gives us all the, so we're running that code from up here on a button on the user form. Now let's think about this for a moment. If we could change this criteria and this here to suit by putting the information into here, so whatever we select as a field, which will be our header for our criteria, and whatever we select as search will be this one in here, we can make this totally variable. So let's do that, I'll show you how to do it. So go back to the Visual Basic Editor, click on your user form. Now what I want you to do is to go back to the user form here, and what we're going to do now is the user form open, we'll go right click and view code. Now up in the top here it says user form, go to the right hand side and choose initialize. So now when the user form initializes, we're going to be able to do this action. So we want to be able to pull all those headers up and put them into our combo box. So we'll put in here me CBO combo. So CBO select it was. That was it there. Dot. And what is it we want to fill? We want to fill the list. So type in L and then double click list. Now the list for that combo box is going to equal what's called worksheet function and a dot. Now remember that across our data sheet, all these headers for our criteria are running horizontally. We want them now to sit vertically, vertically in this combo box. So we're going to use transpose. All right. So we're saying that the list of the in the combo box needs to be worksheet function and transpose the data from where? Well, it will simply be sheet one. Remember, we're always referring to the code name of the sheet. Sheet one range. What's the range? Well, the range was B8 to G8. And we'll just click outside of that and we should be okay. All right, so that should work. Let's go back and see if that works in our actual combo box. So let's click on the interface, open up the combo box. What do we have in here? Yes, we have them. We have all those headers are now in here. So we can put one into here, all right? So basically we've done what we want to do. Go back to the Visual Basic Editor again. Close that out, Alt F11. Now I'll have the Visual Basic Editor up and I'll also show you the background here. Now what we want to do is make the user form variable. We want to change the surname here and the, the criteria. So we want to change what's in the combo box, drop it into here, and what's in the search field, drop into there. It's very, very simple to do. This is how we do it. Now remember we set a variable for our sheet. So we'll just put that variable in There's our variable, data sh, right? And what we're going to say is dot. So our range values are L8 and L9. So it's range. Range L8 equals, that was will be our combo box, will be me dot cbo, not co, cb, and we should be able to pick it up. Select cbo.select.value. All right. Now, our next one, we'll just go down here, we'll grab this and copy it. Put it in down the bottom here again. This time it's going to be L9. And it's going to be me what? me txt and what was it surname wasn't it txt we'll type s there it is txt surname dot text 
OK. Now, let's run our user form and see what we can do. Close that down, go back to our interface, open the user form up, and go to our database. So one's sitting on top of the other. Let's have a look. Let's put in here, first name, and then put in here as a search, A, and then click. Now you notice it put in first name. Now I've made an error in the code here. Let's go, I'll just fix it up. Old F11, that's not txt surname, it's txt search. My apologies for that. So now when we run it, there we go. So that's actually search. And I was using the, the one down here for surname. So if we put in here surname, A, get data. If we put in here first name, A, be different altogether again. Now it's all the first name. So this is fully variable. All we now need to do is take this piece of information that we're filtering and pop it up here into our list box. Well, let's do that. We'll go back to our Visual Basic Editor. Hold F11, I'll close the user form. All right, now what I want you to type in is this little piece of code here. It says list box one, row source equals sheet one, range output. Now output data is the destination range. It's a dynamic named range that I put in the workbook for you that's going to pick up the filtered data. Now this piece of code here on the end, dot address, is showing where to get the information from. And then we put in an argument here that says external equals true. I've done that because we want to run this code from a different sheet. We want to run it external to the sheet that we're in. All right, let's go back and check if this now works. So we'll go back, we don't need to go to our database sheet now. We'll go and open up our user form. We'll put in here, say, surname, and the surname equals A, get data, there it is there. Surname equals M, get data, there it is there. Let's change it to first name equals M. So everything seems to be working fine. So there's a few things now we can do just to tidy this up. So we'll just close this down. We're going to go back to the Visual Basic Editor once again. And we're, we'll go back into our user form. And I want you to click into the combo box. Right, I'll open this up or pull this over so we can see. Now, what we want here, we've got combo box change. We want combo box enter. So when we enter the combo box, we want to do something. Well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to clear what's in the list box. So we'll just put in here list box one. Row source. CE, I'll double click it. Row source equals zero. So as soon as we click in that combo box, it's going to clear what is in the list box for us. Now look, while we're here, we've got this um, click event here for that we're pulling up our data into the user form. Let's put some simple error handling into here. So let's just put on here, on error, go to, and you can call this whatever you want. Go to, we'll call it the real boring one, error handler. Okay, so on error, go to error handler. So if there's an error that occurs, we want this to happen. So the first thing we want to happen is we want to exit the sub. The next thing that we want to happen is we're going to go to our error handler. So ER, H-A-N, here's our error handler. So what do we want to happen? We want a message box. All right, message box, there was an error. So that means that if we have a problem in the sub, rather than the debug dialog box coming up, we're going to get a message that says there was an error. Now, if you go to the work, to the website, the code that I put in there has an error handler in that's going to actually show you the module where the error is and a lot more information about it. I'd suggest you use that, but I just wanted to show you here how to put basic error handling in. So now that little error handler will run for us if there is an error. All right, so let's put in an obvious error. Let's move the, the start of this um, current region over to an area to the right, okay, where I know there's no data. So let's go back and we'll run our user form, click contact, and here's there was an error. All right, so that's basic error handling that we put in. I'll just go back and correct what I put in and put it back to what it should be. Now, while we're here, let's just put one more piece of code in, and this will do this tutorial. All right, so what we can do now is just one more little thing before we finish. Let's go to our user form, 
and we're going to put in some code in here that helps us to close our form. So double click on the close form and what I want you to do is just type in here unload me. No dot, just unload me. So let's review what we've done today. We've got our user form that comes up. We're able to filter the data by surname, put in A here for instance, and we're able then also uh, to have that data filtered by any of these criteria. First name, starting with M. And there's the information. And we can close our form. That's where we're up to today. In our next tutorial, we'll start showing you how to edit this data and move it across to your database. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks very much for joining us and bye for now.